All right, about halfway through the run here, uh, I need to make a quick shout out for today's vlog topic to Gwen Jorgensen, 2016 gold medalist at the Rio Olympics in the triathlon. Gwen, thank you. You don't know me, but that's all right. Thank you for this topic idea for today, all about how to run faster without running more. So I appreciate it. You can go watch her version, upper right hand corner. All right, about halfway, let's keep going. That's what I'm talking about. Seven miles in the books, a little bit further. All right, feeling good, feeling good. All right, let's go break this down. How to run faster without running more. All right, see you in the studio. And we are back. All right, how's everybody doing out there? I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm just getting back from my run and I took the, uh, the Wild Horse Fives out today. Uh, I'm, I'm actually getting fairly close to 50 miles, so the full review will be coming sooner rather than later. And I wanted to take them out today uh, to continue to remind the legs and the feet uh, how they compare to, yes, the Peg 36 Trails and the Terra Kiger Fives, which that cross comparison will be coming very soon. And okay, how to run faster without running more. Uh, that is the topic of today's vlog, but just so you know, I didn't do much outside filming, first of all, outside of the studio. Uh, basically, I'm in a little bit of recovery mode from yesterday's vlog. It was some pretty epic filming. That's right, getting all those beautiful shots for the Peg 36 Trail first impressions was, it was a lot of work. So I'm in recovery mode and here's the crazy thing. Uh, my boys, so I, I have three boys, in case you're new you didn't and you didn't know that, I have three boys and they, two of them are camping with grandpa. And if you're a parent, you know that when the kids are away, it is time to get the tasks done. All those chores, all those little things around the house that you have to fix, uh, that is that was my mission this evening after work, just like pounding ground for like two hours on as much as, it's amazing how much you can get done when you're not interrupted. You know what I mean, parents out there listening. And those tasks around the house actually does connect to today's topic about running faster by running less, connecting it to leisure, and yes, keyword, forgot to write it down, is leisure. I'll explain that in a minute as well. And today as we break down this topic we're just going to be riffing here back and forth the real good conversation will happen down below in the comments okay we can all choose how much we want to run right whether you love running ultra ultra races or short distance like miles and two miles or 5ks uh, it is our choice to decide how much we run and what we often forget as athletes is the time. So today I went seven miles. Very excited, very proud of that distance considering I'm coming back from the injury. It was 56 minutes, basically eight minute pace, but 24 hours minus 56 minutes is 23 hours and four minutes. So the question becomes right now, what am I going to do in the next 23 hours and four minutes until my next run to make sure I'm taking care of my body, my mind, everything else to make sure I am prepped and ready and basically as recovered as possible 
for the next run. I think as runners, uh, we get busy, you know? A lot of times we are very driven as runners. I, I don't know about you, but long distance runners, if I was a boss and I had employees underneath me, I would, I would seek out marathon runners and ultra runners because I feel like we are very driven people or else you wouldn't really be doing what we do. You know what I mean? There's an inner drive that just gets us off the couch out the door uh, early in the morning, late at night, cold weather, hot weather, high altitude, whatever the case may be, we like to rock and roll a lot of times because I think we have a lot, of, just frankly speaking, I think we have a lot of energy as runners. I know I do, and it's good to burn it off through running. And so we can make the decision as to what we do in between our runs. And I've said it once and I'll say it again, my coach in college, Mark Wetmore, he uh, told us a, a couple times, but at least once I can remember him telling a long story about be one-sided in this world, meaning find your passion, find what you're talented at, and pursue it with all the vigor and all the might that you have. Uh, rather than spreading yourself too thin, like, you know what, okay, when I was injured in college, I tried to pick up the piano. I don't know if I've ever told anybody that. I actually did a couple lessons. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. I am, I, and it lasted about a month. And I gave up, I gave up basically because I healed and I started running again. But during that downtime when I wasn't running, I was trying to pursue music because I like music, I, but it's, it's not my thing. I'm not, it's not, I don't have the talent to play a musical instrument. If I really went all in, probably like it'd take three, four years, whatever. But uh, so Mark said, be one-sided, meaning as a runner, fine. if you're good at it and you really love it, just put your energy into that as much as possible. Um, anyway, that is how I approach, that's how I'm slowly teaching myself to approach things in this world. For example, here we go. All right, and this is some wisdom for all the young young folks out there. As a parent and as a home homeowner, and shout out to all, all the homeowners out there. Like you know, as soon as you buy a home, what's this? How's the saying go? Once a homeowner, or uh, once you have a house, that's all you have. Or like, there's a lot of upkeep when it comes to owning a home. More than I frankly anticipated. And if you wanted, you could do a house project every single day. For example, I tried to uh, I tried to stain the, the fort in the backyard tonight and it just did not work. Like the sprayer that I bought, it's not working. And now I don't know what I'm gonna do if I'm just gonna do it by a paintbrush or what have you. But what I'm realizing as a homeowner and as True Love and I uh, find a little better footing financially, because again, if you've been watching the vlog for the past three years, you know that we've had some challenging moments financially as a family. Like, first of all, Denver is becoming more and more expensive to live in. And uh, so, but as we find better footing financially as a family, I can now, oh my gosh, this is crazy. All right, we're just riffing here. I told you, we're just riffing. I, uh, I, I mowed lawns in high school and I love landscaping. I made a lot of good money. If you're looking, high schoolers out there, if you wanna make a lot of good money in the summer, mow lawns. There's a lot of money to be made. But as I bought, we bought our first house here in Denver eight years ago, I told myself, oh, I cannot wait to mow my own yard. This is gonna be amazing. I, I, I've been waiting for this my whole life. Like it's my yard, it's my property, it's my grass to cut. This is gonna be amazing. Well, fast forward like seven years to last summer, 2018, well, Here's a little clip from Family. what happened. If I have to put three to four hours a week into taking care of this yard. And so we decided together that it's time. It's time to hire a company to come to our house once a week to do a task that I can do. However, <laughs> I don't have the time to do it well anymore. That's right, I had to give up mowing my own yard. Why? I was spread too thin. I didn't have enough time. I was not doing a great job at keeping up with it. And frankly, my running was becoming pretty serious. The volume, I was tired. I was trying to push a lawnmower for three hours a week, which doesn't sound like much, but it just was, it was too taxing. I told myself, I cannot do this. I am wearing out my legs. I need to be resting. I need to be pursuing leisure right now rather than mowing my yard. And so I tell you that story just to remind you that there's different stages of life. Like, 
High school is so much different than being a young family. Uh, late in your career, as you transition into retiring, I'm sure is so much different than being a young professional right out of college trying to find your first job, which means you have only 24 hours in a day, right? I always say that as a runner, we have to, I, I am frankly a little obsessed with time. 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 I want to talk about time and I need to work, be better at just like kind of letting it go a little bit. I can think about it a little too much. Like efficiency is really uh, a hot topic in my brain. I just love to be efficient and get things done. And that's that gets back to that whole like marathon ultra runner mentality. Like I think we're just driven. Okay, one last point about how to run faster. It's all about rest. And yes, I will make the argument leisure so this is a book that i read maybe five six years ago it's by joseph peeper it's called leisure the basis of culture it's a little philosophical and, and even gets into metaphysics it's a little above me frankly but it was a very good book it opened my eyes for uh teaching myself how to truly truly rest and as runners once again we're so driven we want to run a lot we want to run fast we want to burn energy we want to get into the gym i think uh, i know i don't think i know and this is not just my thesis this is backed up by science backed up by uh, professional athletes and their uh, reflection reflections on their training i'm thinking specifically of dathan ritzenhein uh, and just articles that i've read from him uh, we need to pursue rest at night i already talked about that how much to sleep but even during the day leisure and just relaxing not being lazy there's a difference between being lazy and pursuing leisure uh, but whether it's whether you pursue leisure through through books through music through at the end of the day tip of the day it's all about is like staying off our feet we got it we got to get off our feet and even as I'm standing here right now in the studio I'm like oh my gosh I need to get inside and I just need to start editing and because when I edit at night I'm off my feet for like three hours straight it's amazing I just sit there and I just edit the vlog so and it's fun for me so I don't know if that's quite leisure but anyway question of the day how do you pursue leisure and what do you think about this whole topic of how to run faster leisure sleep all of these little things the uh, for me today the other 23 hours and four minutes that i have to the next run what am i going to do to make sure my muscles my joints my ligaments my bones are ready for the next run yeah picking up what i'm putting down i love you all thanks for being here thanks for watching thanks for listening to that i know we riffed there for a little bit but i like i like the topic and i think it's important to talk about oh, seek beauty Work hard, pursue leisure, and love each other. See you tomorrow. Mm -mm -mm. Good time.